Welcome to St. Malachy's The Actors' Chapel as we celebrate Holy Thursday. who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. 
The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat it like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples and dry them with a the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I've done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord.
It's a very beautiful and humbling image of our Lord coming to each of the disciples and washing their feet. It's beautiful and it's humbling because Jesus has to kneel down, be close to the ground. He has to go back and forth as a servant. He has to do what it is that he is setting out to do with love and with dedication, do it properly. And then ultimately when it is finished, to be able to look at those who are there and to let them know that now the charge belongs to them to go forward and to serve in the world, in the church, after this beautiful example. It was for us, not for himself, that the mandata that we do for the other, as has been done for us, was laid down. This year, as we continue to make strides toward recovering so much of what we treasure as part of our traditions from Holy Week, we contemplate washing the feet again. In some places, I'm sure it will happen because as we know things are opening in different ways again using the best knowledge that's available the best safety and security and the best measure of faith to know that god is indeed watching over those communities when all these things work together we too will recover all of what we have known before but our time in thinking about this virtually in this way, allows us to think about what it is that we've been given in this Holy Thursday liturgy. We've been given, first and foremost, the great high priest, Christ himself. And from Christ, we've been given a model of service that all priests, the priesthood that are those of the ordained and the priesthood of the faithful, would follow, that we would do for one another, out of service, out of humility. But we're also given on this feast the gift of the Eucharist, which calls to mind the beautiful words of St. John Paul II, when he said, without the priest, there is no Eucharist. Without the Eucharist, there is no church. We thank God on this Holy Thursday night for the gift of the ordained priesthood that Jesus gave as a lasting gift. And as we thank God for the gift, we also pray that those who share in the gift may recognize how important their roles are. Where do vocations come from? ultimately from God. How does God call, make his invocatus known? He does it through the faith. Ask any priest what sustained him, what gave him the courage to continue to pray and to celebrate the sacraments, to ultimately come and to pursue the dream, to enter the seminary, to go into formation, to be ordained a priest. He'll tell you it was the prayers that came from the people of God gathered to worship, the assembly that we all share. So tonight, when we talk about priesthood, we talk about those who cooperate with God in allowing vocations to become real, to be heard, and to be responded to. But we also pray in thanksgiving for what the priesthood brings. For when the priest is at the altar and the faithful are gathered together in that moment, the Eucharist is confected. It comes to us. Jesus Christ, true God, true man, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And as we experience that gift, 
we recognize from the Greek the good charism, the thanksgiving, the gratitude that we have that God would continue to sustain us and to feed us in this way. The Eucharist that unites the Christian community. My friends, let us pray tonight in gratitude for wherever we are, whether we can be in a church together in a community of believers, or whether we're together tonight virtually. Let our prayer be strong and united that sustains the priesthood in which we all have a stake, a share, and the Eucharist that comes from the gift of that priesthood, that nourishes us, sustains us, that we might serve as Christ has served. Let us profess the faith that unites us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joy and hope, let us bring our prayers and petitions to our God who is King. For missionaries, may the Lord bless them with generosity and boldness in sharing the love of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the heads of government throughout the world, may God's gracious mercy be upon them and those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are troubled in spirit, may they receive hope and healing through the grace of God and the efforts of their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may the Lord bless our relationships and grant us purity of heart and mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the light of faith, May they share in the resurrection of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all special petitions brought before the altar. Let us pray to the Lord. We ask that you hear and answer these prayers through Christ our
have gifts have been prepared, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father of Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, to the praise and glory of his name, for our good, the good of all his holy church. O Lord, accept, we ask, the prayers of your people, with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into the Passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Saints Malachi and Genesius, Cecilia and Vitus, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Amen. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let's go.